What was last night's show? What the hell was that? Is that what we're going to be subjected to for the rest of the year? Up until the Royal Rumble, are we really in autopilot mode for the remainder of the year? That had to be the worst Monday Night Raw I have ever seen in my life. And no, I have not, I have, yes, I have seen every Monday Night Raw now thanks to the WWE Network. No, I did not watch them all live because I was three years old when Raw started. Well, I was actually two years old when Raw started. And I didn't start watching Monday Night Raw on the whole until 2004. But this has got to be, last night's show was the worst Raw of all time. Plain and simple. And there were some bad Raws, mostly, mostly, um, 93, 94, 95, most of those Raws were pretty bad, but not like this. You expected those to be bad, because, especially if you had any smarts, simply because they were just, you know, they were in their infancy ages, infancy years. They weren't as, like, fine-tuned as they are nowadays, but what we saw last night was absolutely an abomination of wrestling. It is the worst show on TV, and Vince McMahon should be ashamed of himself. We got more toilet humor. We got a, gr- a gross abuse of power from Baron Corbin, who now calls himself general manager-elect because Braun Strowman is going to be out. WWE had a chance to give us a shiny moment, a time to build a new star, maybe in a losing effort. With the Seth Rollins Intercontinental Open Challenge, you had people like Mustafa Ali coming out and saying, I'll take you up on that on Twitter. You had Zack Ryder. You had others sitting there saying, hey, I'll be, I'll be there this coming Monday. And what do we get? Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins for the 16,000th time this year since June. Every single month and seems like every single week since, the, since June, it's been Dolph Ziggler, Seth Rollins, or Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and Seth versus Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, or the Dogs of War versus the Shield. It's just pathetic, and it's it's just lame booking. Now we had the power hungry and the abusive powers GM in Baron Corbin, who's going to sit here and abuse his power. He's going to get destroyed. He's going to lose his job, and Alexa Bliss is going to become your raw general manager after TLC. She is now overseeing the women's division for the next three weeks. Yay. We have the AOP defend their tag team titles against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, and we got Drake Maverick pissing all over Bobby Roode's robe. So... Just another nail in Bobby Roode's coffin. This show was absolutely awful. There is nothing redeeming about this show. The only thing that I think that was a redeeming quality at all, even though it's not, is the finish to the Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler match. I've been calling it for weeks, months even, that I would love to see a superplex Falcon Arrow be the finish of a match for Seth Rollins, and it was in that match. That's it. Other than that, this show was just abysmal, and WWE is not even trying. This show was so bad that the Solar Monster got on his computer or whatever he uses on, on his equipment and recorded a sound off soundbite extra. And he hardly ever does that. That's how bad this show was. Because usually he does his show on the weekend where he talks about Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and anything else that he talks about. That was, show was so piss poor bad that that dude had to have found, found it that he needed to get on his on his recording, record an extra, and blast this show. This show has no redeeming qualities. To anybody who calls this a show, like this show is it's entertainment. Why didn't you watch if you don't like it? A lot of people are turning off the show after this week, guaranteed. You just have to watch the first 10 minutes of the show and realize where the show was going. The show was trash. We started the show off with Bobby Lou, well, not Bobby Lou, Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre gloating about what happened last week. I can't. 
camera crew to Birmingham, Alabama, where Braun Strowman is being prepped for surgery. So let's see what the maimed monster had to say. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Getting ready to have surgery on this. I don't have to get WWE's props department for the nice makeup job on Braun Strowman's arm. surgeons in Birmingham, Alabama, like Dr. James Andrews have not seen a, a, an injury like that. Give me a break. They've seen worse than that. Way worse. So don't give me that bullshit. And we all know it's just bone spurs. Of course, you ever had to work on an arm this size? Bullshit. So hope the hospital has the tools and they can get in there and figure this thing out. I will be back 100%. And what I am, the attack on me last week, and the gore the surgeon's gonna go through on my surgery today are gonna seem like paper cuts compared to what I do to Corbin, Lashley, and McIntyre. Because when I get back, all three of you are gonna get these hands. Okay, we get it. He said it. You're chanting it. We get it. We're gonna get these hands. That's like if those hands even work after his surgery. Oh, Bobby, just leave, leave the talking to Leo Rush because you can never really talk that well in WWE. All right, guys, look. The way I see it, there's no way Braun Strowman will be medically cleared to come to the As I stated earlier, he's going to show up, he's going to embarrass Braun, um, Baron Corbin, he's going to bury him, and then Alexa Bliss becomes your full-time general manager. Yay? Because you know WWE wants to do the, they already have a woman's GM on SmackDown and Paige, but she's a babyface. We need a heel general manager on Raw. So we're going to get Alexa Bliss. What's that do for Kurt Angle? I don't know what they're doing with him. Let's go out, and I honestly thought we were going to get Bray Wyatt. Or somebody is getting fired. Yes. Hello, I am Elias. Now, I couldn't possibly sit back there any longer and listen to your annoying voice. I just sit now. worse. I mean, literally anyone would be better than you. I mean, Leo Rush would be better than you, and I, I gotta believe that violates all kind of, you know, child labor laws. Still hitting those child labor laws jokes. Hold their applause, and well, Baron, if you do the whole world a favor, and shut your mouth. Sing this little song from Bob. We all want to know that, not. When you're feeling depressed and feeling down on your luck, know that it could get worse. You could be Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley sucks. Bobby Lashley sucks. And Bobby Lashley sucks. Oh, Bobby Lashley sucks. Sing it, everybody. Bobby Lashley 
Couldn't agree more. So that led to Bobby Lashley versus Elias. But Elias was in was on the verge of well, on the verge of winning this match when Leo Rush pulled the referee out. The ref was calling for the bell when Baron Corbin stopped and it said, No, this is gonna be a no disqualification match because you interrupted me before I could tell you the match what the match stipulation was going to be. So the three heels beat down Bobby La um, Elias for to allow Elias to lose to Bobby Lashley in what will be the first of two beatdowns on the night, which, of course, it is. Uh, then we had, in the back, after we come back from a commercial break, we have Baron Corbin firing somebody before Alexa Bliss comes in. They shake hands, and now, when it comes to this, the entire night, from here on out, anytime Alexa Bliss's name was brought up, you would have Michael Cole and Corey Graves arguing back and forth about her being an active member of the Raw roster and being put in charge of the women's division. I mean, isn't Baron Corbin an active member of the Raw roster and he is the acting general manager of Monday Night Raw? So, why are you guys bitching and complaining about Alexa Bliss being in charge of the women's division, which we don't know if she's going to wrestle again. That might be a thing, though. She does not wrestle again because she's had multiple concussions. The same thing that happened with Daniel Bryan before he did what he did. And the same reason Corey Graves is not on any roster right now, and he's just commentating. So, why, like, that was one of the more annoying things, of, more annoying things of the night was Baron Corbin, was the fact that Michael Cole... And Corey Graves would just can constantly, constantly, constantly sit there and argue back and forth why. Oh, it's not right that she's, that she's become general manager. She's um, overseeing the women's division. Oh, Corey Cor was like, God damn, shut the fuck up. It's not the first time. It ain't going to be the last time somebody who can wrestle has been in charge. I mean, look at William Regal when he was, the both times he was in charge of Monday Night Raw. He was still an active participant. Then we get a video from Dean Ambrose who's getting shot at his doctors. Did you really think that I would expose myself for Raw tonight in the toxic dump that is Milwaukee? Don't be disappointed. I'm sure you're used to disappointment by now. Seth Rollins will also say that he's disappointed that I'm not there. so safe as to issue his Intercontinental Championship Open Challenge tonight, because I'm not there. Next week, I promise, I will be there, right in the center of the ring. But right now, first of all, it's flu season, and I just don't want to risk coming out there and risk catching something from you people, because you people, like Rollins, are vermin. Sometimes out there, I feel like I'm in a third world country. The stench of your breath, the putrid smell of your body odor, your greasy, fat little hands pawing at me. It's revolting. Revolting. Sometimes I feel 
feel like I need protection from like Ebola or E. coli or coli or whatever it is, diseases you're all carrying. Dysentery, typhoid, distemper, right? And the next one's rabies, right? I couldn't do it. Sorry, no. Go to Houston next week without my rabies shot. This next shot's going to be very good. It's a pressure pain. Now, Seth Rollins, there is no shower that can wash away your sins. Ow. There is no medicine for you. That can cure the sickness that is in your soul. You are a lost cause, compadre. And TLC, because I'm such a great guy, I'm going to do the good and decent thing, the merciful thing. Put you out of your misery. For good. Nah, Dean, can you just do us all a favor and put us all out of our misery after what we saw the last night? Because this was a piss poor show. Plain and simple. Just a terrible show. And then the Lucha House probably buried the revival once again because we get a three on two advantage because of Lucha House rules. Somebody tell me why a babyface team, a babyface team is getting a three on two advantage over a heel team. It just makes no fucking sense. Lucha House party wins, embarrassing the revival once again and making me wonder. Why the Revival, a team, an NXT, put on some of the best damn tag team matches against DIY, against the Authors of Pain. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was the Revival versus the AOP versus DIY. That was a hell of a match. The match at TakeOver Toronto where the, 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 the DIY finally climbed the mountain. I believe that was Toronto. <laughs> and those, like, those, these, these two teams, the AOP also later in this night, were, were just... Looking worse and worse as we go. And there was a report out like three weeks ago that said that when the AOP won the tag team titles, why did they win the tag team titles? Because they, WWE wants to build the AOP versus the Revival in a tag team feud. I call bullshit because of how you're treating the Revival, losing to three luchadors in the piñatas. One, that is a Fortnite piñata, if anyone hasn't looked. And two, you're having the AOP... Led by somebody who gets made fun of for pee jokes. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. We go from the embarrassing embarrassment of the Lucha House Party vs. Revival to Nia Jax. And I am not playing this goddamn promo again. I can't listen to it. It is fucking god awful. Nia Jax shouldn't be teaching us jack shit. She comes out saying, oh, Ronda Rousey hasn't been the same since her crash at Money in the Bank. Didn't that match end with Alexa Bliss hitting you in the back, hitting Twisted Bliss on you, and winning the Women's Championship after she took out Ronda Rousey? Yeah, I think so. Then they also showed the fact that Ronda Rousey got her ass beat by Charlotte Flair, and she's like, oh, well, I'm going to take the championship from her. And then you have Ronda Rousey come out after getting insulted and badmouthed by Nia Jax, smiling, waving to the fans. It was one thing last week when Ronda Rousey got her ass kicked at Survivor Series to come out and no sell anything from Survivor Series. That pissed me off. To now coming out and just doing a Bobby Lashley when he was facing off against Sami Zayn when Sami Zayn was making fun of Bobby Lashley every step of the way. And Bobby Lashley just smiling about everything. Knock the smiles off. Just knock the fucking smiles off. Natalia comes out to try and help Ronda Rousey, who is going to be on a 2 and one advantage, like disadvantage because of Tamina. She gets close to the ring, and out comes the Riot Squad. Ronda Rousey beats up the Riot Squad, burying them along the way. And that was the segment, really. Nia Jax didn't do anything after that. Natalia got beat up a little bit. Ronda Rousey helped her up, and that was that. AOP versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable for the tag team titles. This match was pretty much one thing. Bobby Roode's robe was taken by Drake Maverick. He ran to the back, went to a restroom, put it in a porta potty or in a urinal, and he peed on it. Yeah, the toilet humor continues. 
And the only person who legitimately finds this shit funny, the only person who finds this shit legitimately funny, is Vince McMahon. Plain and simple. Vince McMahon is the only person in the entire fucking WWE universe or in the fucking world who finds this shit funny and because he's five years old. Going on 75, 76, whatever it is. The dude has never grown up. I mean, it's okay to have childish tendencies to yourself, being a child. Like, it's never too, you can be the biggest kid in the room, but you gotta know when to grow the fuck up and stop doing shit like this. This was pathetic. The LP continue to look like chumps, they continue to look like shit, and I don't know why WWE has, like, you gave them the tag team titles for no reason other than to make fun of them. Does Vince McMahon hate NXT that much? Does he think have a disdain for NXT that badly? This, this, this was just pathetic. Bailey and Sasha Banks were then in the back talking about something. I think they were talking about uh, that commercial they did earlier in the night where they were, they were the WWE shop spokespeople for the night. Alexa Bliss comes in, tries to suck up to him, and says, we're going to have an open forum later in the night. Ugh. Ember Moon versus Alicia Fox. Who do you think won that one? Of course, Ember Moon's partner, Ron Strowman, Monster Clips, is no more because Ron Strowman is out for the next three, four, five weeks or so. So she gets Kurt Hawkins as his replacement. So you go from Braun Strowman and Alexa Bliss to Braun Strowman and Ember Moon to Ember Moon and Kurt Hawkins. Gee, we know who's losing next tomorrow, tonight at um, the Mixed Match Challenge. Ember Moon won this one, and, I'm, and Kurt Hawkins is freaking out and, all, and like, all happy because he, this is the closest he's seen a win in over, over 200 and some matches. No way, Jose comes out and he faces Jinder Mahal. Who wins that match? Who do you think, Jinder Mahal? Who cares? Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the 1,674th time this fall. Seth Rollins wins this one with a suplex Falcon Arrow, finally. But who cares? We've seen it before, and there was nothing new other than that finish. Bliss comes out to embarrass Banks and Bailey with the right with. For some reason, Mickey James, Alex, um, and Dana Brooke, and Alicia Fox all come out to gang up on Bailey and Sasha Banks after this thing. For some reason, wasn't Dana Brooke just recently a babyface for on house shows and everything, and now they're having her attack Bailey and Sasha Banks? What was the damn point? And then we have the finale, the final nail in this shitty coffin. Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin, which turns into a handicap match with Dream McIntyre coming on later. Halfway, like, towards the climax, the end of this match, Baron Corbin is getting his ass kicked. He's like, hold on, Finn. This is now a handicap match, and my tag team partner, Drew McIntyre, hits the Claymore kick. One, two, three, Drew and Baron Corbin win. Who gives a shit? After the match, Bobby Lashley comes out, and they just beat the hell out of Drew McIntyre, out of Finn Balor to end the show the way we started the show. With the big bird brooding heels, winning and looking like sh- and just making the entire show feel like shit. This show was not worth watching. If you missed this show, you did not miss anything. If you watched whatever, I think it was the Titans and the Texans tonight or last night on ESPN, you watched something probably better than what you saw on Monday Night Raw. This show sucks, and it's going to continue because WWE doesn't care. The only time they'll somewhat care is WrestleMania season. And that's not for another two months. But that is your Monday Night Raw review. It was nothing special. Make sure to find me on Twitter at TheFrance. Find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. And I'll see you guys tonight. Most likely for at SmackDown Live. Hopefully we're in for a better show. AJ Styles returns to confront Daniel Bryan. And that should be something worth watching. Until then, my name is Fountain, and I'm getting out of here.